Hello, everyone, uh, to a bit of an odd game. Uh, this is another uh, liminal space horror game. Uh, editing doesn't look a little weird here. It's called This is a Black Parapleidion in a Yellow Field. Um, you're probably going to see only what I'm like cutting in right now. Uh, it might look a little weird at the beginning, but that's more than okay. I think yeah, this is like a point and click adventure. Also, if you hear me like any like weird cuts or anything, it's because there is a cat <laughs> uh, currently near me. Uh, it's Nala this time. She is very, very adamant on being in my room right now. I'll, I'll send a video of this. Nala, hey, Goober. She used to be something. But yeah, uh, but yeah, let's begin by stepping forwards. As the trail reaches an opening through the woods, cool shadows give away to a patch of bright yellow cultivated fields. It is the perfect summer day. Mature wheat sways in the wind. This succession of woods and field has happened before, and it will happen again. On the horizon past the farmland, you see a dark line of trees. It, too, will fade in the yellow expanse. Let's look at the shadows. As the trail reaches an opening through the woods, okay. a shadow of something stirs. Okay, it's a dark line of trees. A sign of rustling of thoughts. Stay focused. Okay. Take your first step back onto the sun on this narrow dirt road that joins the wood to the fields again. Some 20 meters to the side of the trail, a lone ash tree breaks the waves of wheat. It is one of two intrudes in this yellow world. Further out, the field's order is disturbed by a simple geometric structure which function you cannot quite interpret. So be it. You do not know many things. The earth is soft on your feet, still damp with yesterday's rain. Insects buzz their indescribable traturations with grace. Breathe in and fill your lungs with the world, which smells soil and grass. Hurry up along the path. Though I am going to choose to stare at the structure. You let your gaze linger upon the structure. The lower branches of the ash tree crest its flat upper end, but only by trickery of perspective, and tell you nothing about its size that far away. The sea of wheat absorbs all distances, which certainly you can assert that it is black, a homogeneous, rectangular, thrice as wide as it is tall. You thought slip, circling the edge of the black chasm. No. Climb back to the sun? No, of course not. Dim thoughts, the black tranquility under the blankets. Go south, go north, go east, go west. We'll go north. Dim thoughts, ghostly sparks across an old phone lines. We'll go back. Go east. Dim thoughts, furious strokes of black pen blotting out the page. The old words are drowned. Go west. The dim thoughts, the black tranquility under blankets. Go south. Dim thoughts, a garden and novel at once. You know how that one goes. Dim thoughts, dark shadow, shade, a black, a cavernous void. A place to fall, the crack in the bottom of the lowest thought. You are filled with dark shadow, shade, black from the top of clockwise, like so. Dark shadow, shade, black. Over and over and over again. You stand in the darkness. I'm going to take a photo of that, because I really need it. Okay. Let's go north. Dim thoughts, the darkness of gone words. Go north. Dim thoughts, shadow leaves. Are we here? I guess that's where we are. Uh, let's go northeast. Dim thoughts. This is not it. Okay, go back. Oh, this is a different place. Um, let's go south. Uh, dim thoughts. The darkness conferred to words printed on a page where none alone is marked in a different color. Let's go north. Dim thoughts. Shadow leaves. Go east. Dim thoughts. Shade cast on a house when the sky overhead is still bright. Let's go northwest. Dim thoughts. Deep and vast. Go back. Go east. Dim thoughts. The surface of that obsidian pendant hanging on the wall in your grandmother's room, the way its black surface always felt like it was hiding the secrets under snowflake-shaped quartz spots. Let's go west. Dim thoughts. Shade cast on the house when the sky overhead is still bright. Let's go northwest. Nothing. East. Dim thoughts. The surface that is obsidian pendant. Same one. West. Okay. South. Dim thoughts. Darkened wood and shadowy rocks on the mountain sunset. It seems that we are kind of in stuck in a bit of a circle. Oh. 
dim thoughts, but the moon was hidden by a tree. But. Okay. We had the thing again. Okay. So clearly we are stuck somewhere. Okay. What if I continue to go a certain direction? West, northwest. Oh, dim thoughts, so many thoughts. Hmm. Okay. Dim thoughts, dark shadow, shade, black, carnivorous void. A place to fall, the crack at the bottom of your lowest thought. You are filled with dark shadow, shade, black from the top of the clockwise, like so. I'm not fully understanding what's happening. Over and over and over again, back to the beginning, over and over, as the parapolypian looms, there is a way out of these thoughts. These hues find you through your secret path. Find your way. Take the darkness to your north. Okay, this is the path. Okay. Taking a photo of this as well. Find your way. Take darkness as your north. Dark thoughts leave north. Shadows take you east. If there is shade, it is a sign that it points you south. Blackness herds the west. Okay. So we know that this is just this. Okay. So we're standing in the dark. Darkness is north. So we go dark. Dim thoughts. Darkness can fade the words printed on the page where the no one noun aloud is marked in a different color. Go north. Dim thoughts, shadow leaves. Shadows take you east. Dim thoughts. Shade casts on a house when the sky overhead is still bright. Shade is... Hmm. Shade that points you south. Okay, south. Darkened woods and the shadowy rocks. Shadows take you east. Ooh, there's two. Okay. Darkened one, shadow rocks, mountain silence. Is there a darkened one? Darkness to your north. Northeast. Dim thoughts. The street light casts a world of dancing dashes of reds and pinks and yellows, but there is such a vast cosmos of vivid shade beyond it. Okay. So I think it's going to be two. So shade, which is south. I don't see anything else. Okay, so south. A blank blackboard, rows of equally refreshed erased. Oh, shit. Okay. Is there a blank one? We'll go west. Okay. Black liqueur, unscribed. Okay. Uh, blackness is west. Okay. Dim thoughts. Furious strokes of black pen, blind and ink page. Drowned. It's still west. Yeah. Yep, still west. Darkness and the tones dug by worms. Still west. Deep shadows and deep caves. Shadows take you east. Dim thoughts. Darkness and tones dug by worms. Darkness is north. Okay. Dim thoughts. When the film is over and the screen goes dark. Why say question go west? Hmm. Take darkness at your north. I'm going to continue. North. Dim thoughts. Dark shadows on the highway. Far away from the city. You walk alone. No cars light the way. Go. Bright thoughts. A yellow field of mature wheat under the perfect summer day. Its surface broken only by the majesty of an old ash tree. Open your eyes. And thus, with your eyes wide open, the truth is the world. You see a black parapolion in the yellow field, and still you grasp at nothing. Thoughts are drawn into its mass, but fail to coalesce around it, as if crashing against a steep black wall. A purple state of mind floods the sky. Exit. Mountain's dusk. A trail coasting the mountainside. Clouds gather underneath, filling the valley. The sky is restless. A wind blows. Elena and Adele are wearily making their way back down one slow step after the other. The way is treacherous, but their mind is elsewhere. A contravan gust ruffles, follows the, uh, ruffles their hair. They pause, resting their backs against the mountainside. Elena, I can't do this anymore. Blink. Consider the enigma of the fields. Something moves under the ash tree. 
An arm rises into a slow stretch. Someone has been resting against the trunk, hidden by rows of wheat. As you raise your head to get a better look, you see the tip of a trucker hat, faded by the sun, and a glimpse of a brown rubber gas shows among the roots. Is this the field's owner, or a hired hand taking the break from a hard day's work, or a hiker like you, defeated by the midday sun, or by the, well, you know. The wind howls down the creek. Exit mountains. Continued. Their breath is still heavy. Elena, I do not understand what you need from me. I need you to understand. Understand what? You wouldn't get it. Ah. This pause. The conversation has died a thousand deaths, but I do still not understand. Blink again. The wheat grows and grows and grows vigorously. You make your way to the faint trail in the wheat. The crops brush against your legs. You wave a polite greeting to the resting figure, who turns to be a man in his sixties. Strong jaw, deep wrinkles, baked by the sun. He does not seem to come all the way out of his nap yet, but he has regained enough awareness to wave back at you and offer a warm smile. You can ask, Hello, if it's not a bother, I have questions regarding the structures in the middle of your field, perhaps comments. Ask, Hello, forgive me, but I have questions pertaining to the matter I would like to better understand. Ask, My good man, you have known of the massive black thing in the middle of your field. Ask, what a lucky chance meeting before I get to core of this matter with one thing. Do you happen to work here? Ask, hello, sorry for disturbing you. Can you tell me what the structure is in the middle of your field is? Or, good day. That over there wouldn't happen to be the brutalist bus stop of, or a mirage or a pile of coal, would it? Hmm. You just met this man. Let's ask him if he works here. You feel it in the purple of your bones. Zeno's paradox of language is it ever possible to get to the point, or are we lost in the ruins of a resurrected halfway states? Pebbles echoed down the ravines. Exit mountains. Continued. Adele. Elena, now you listen to me. If at any point in this miserable pile of days we call in existence, I would have put into position to feel even one emotion. I, Elena says, staring at the ravine underneath. Nasty things, those. She gets a grip of herself. When she speaks, her tone is composed like an efficient, Adele says. It would crack this rock we are standing on, and I would fall down to the depths of the sunless cavern, too far away from the world of the company of bats and newts. Elena says, where's the cavern? Oh, it is deep. But where? Where does it lie? Why? No reason. She kneels down to look under a pebble. There are holes everywhere in these mountains, layers of soft limestone dipping away. The fields, the fields, a soft line of trees stands guard in the horizon and looks the other way. The man shoots a curious glance your way but does not show any signs of answering. From his placid demeanor, it looks like your question evaded him entirely. You may want to reformulate your question in a simpler way. Maybe he's still sleepy. Maybe he doesn't understand your language. Ask Lily, big black box, what does it mean? Point very clearly at the solid and ask, what's that? Question, what is black? Mimic sitting on the tree, a fearfully grinding of drops. You don't want to go back into the darkness. Trace a rectangle in the air and an interrogation mark with your other hand. Interesting is that if I ask slowly, big black box, only some of it is here. Now, remember, these are different directions. Long key. Hmm. Parallels. Words, 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 words. Exit mountains continued. It doesn't matter. It would just be a cavern. Nothing interesting about it. Elena. Deep sun. Sunless. Damp. Hollow. Holy. Solitary. Distant. Subterranean. Silent. Sedimentary. Drained. Vaporous. Jagged. Delinic. Eroded. Cracked. Unexplored. Unknown. Unbreached. Home to the ohm. Pseudodorpian. Blind spider. Cave snail. Blind cavefish and ca cave crayfish. What were we talking about? Do not lose your way. Wheat grows and grows vigorously. It seems to be a sin. That be a sweat rolls on your temple. You may want to formulate a question. Hmm. Aren't you blanched? There are so many words. Oh. He is deteriorating. Let me ask a question. There are always mountains, a hollowed summon. The air buzzes with interference from the distant radio. Exit mountains continued. 
How about you standing in a black and formless space? It's all right. It's lonely. Your voice would cross the tunnels. There are no words down there, softly to herself. There are barely words in this trail, all the wrong ones. Useless synonyms never reaching the snare. Eleanor, scream then, and you will come, always. This distant yearning lingers, every niche filled with an instant, incessant chirping of crickets. The man shoots another glance away. You stare in the distance, anxiety grips you. You may want to reformulate the question again. Think, think. These words are getting more and more incomprehensible as we get further in. What about snails? Cry. At this point, it changes nothing. The wind howls down the creek. Mountains continue. A trail coasting the mountainside. Two women disappear in the silence and layer of clouds together. Leave them to their lives. Come back. Come back. Come back. The wind howls down the creek. A headache germinates from the base of your neck. Your mouth is dry, the ash tree rustles in the breeze, leaf brushing against leaf, participating in the creation of a sound that has no intent nor message. No living trees fell with the Tower of Babel. One last attempt. Gather these precious moments in the safe cavity of your mouth. Push them against your lips and your palate. Your tongue is frozen, your jaw is clenched. This is your treasure. Offer it to gain one gain of absolute effort in a time, like a beaded jewel. Stop. A dictionary bursts into fire. Blink. A headache germinates from the base of your neck. Hmm. Seems to spell something else out. Dictionary burst into fire. Blink. It seems that we need to find some combination of words. Let's see. Let's try T O P F. Nothing. Hmm. O P T S. Nothing. How about post? P O S T. Pot doesn't work. Uh, spot. S P O T. Nothing. Tops. T O P S. It seems like nothing we do is working. Hmm. Are we just stuck here? Maybe we're missing something. Nothing. What could this be? Maybe it needs to have a word that doesn't exist. <gasps> I knew it. Bazaar, says the man, perking up with a jovial smile. He slaps his elbow in his wisdom with a touch of conspira conspirational flair. He tells you that... As you know, there is only one thing left to do. Venture deep into the sea of wheat. There is no way back now. Wheat grows and grows vigorously. Don't look back. No way to go but forward. Whatever this may take you, push on and on. So you walk through the wheat, following the distant black monolith like the morning star fixed across the sky, every niche filled with in incessant chirping of crickets across the sky. You walk a brilliant black plateau, leaving the no trace of smooth, hard ground. In the distance, a crop of golden wheat rises with a geometric precision. Thrice as wide as tall, a solid line of trees stands guard in the horizon most of the way. So it's flipped. The ground. Go further. The rows of wheat end abruptly as the ground disappears into a steep rectangular chasm, which you show to be thrice as wide and as deep. The sun shines overhead, but no light reaches under the ground level. And contains a known volume of darkness. Perceive. With your hand, follow the irregular surface of the Peripedia Genum side. There are layers of darkened limestone, black encrustations, 
sun-kissed peaks and shadowy ridges, desert world he must, the place is represented by the topography exists on another planet. We're back. Dim thoughts, deep shadows. Seem to need to find our way out again. Shadows equals east. Darkness. North. Dim thoughts when the film is over, screen goes dark. What if we go west this time? Shadows. Smoke shadows. Let's go east. It goes dark again. What if I go opposite? Dim thoughts deep down the tunnels. Push forward, you've made it so far. Dim thoughts, dark shadows on the highway far above the city. You walk alone and no cars light the way. And we're back. Bright thoughts, a yellow field of, of manure wheat. Oh, mature wheat under the perfect summer sky. The surface broken only by the majesty of an old ash tree. Basket its greatness, open your eyes. Again. Perceive. You walk around the structure looking for an entrance, a ladder, any proof of its purpose. On the other side, you find a mirror in the form of a reflective wall. Several dozen meters long, your reflection places along the wall. On the backdrop of the line of trees that only known, only now mirrored evokes you in a strong feeling of nostalgia. Were you ever there before? Where is there? Oh. Perceive. Run your finger along in the edge, gently like you would brush the feathers of a scared bird. The juncture between these two faces of the solid is ge geometrically sharp. For all you care, your fingers bleed. Reflectively, you put it in your mouth. The bleeding stops. Something tastes of liqueur. Perceive. Forehead pressed against the vast dark surface. Nostrils breathing in unfathomable information. Hands clinging fut futilely to the both sides. You are left with a single thought of contemplation. Lick it. You look at the surface in search of answers. Your tongue resonates as your ears like they had drawn to a, a bow along a violin string. It tastes like a whistle in the deep of the woods, or the next neighborhood over, like something distant. Distant. Perceive, at some point, around knee-high, there is a fissure. Tracing its rim with a finger creates a whistling sound that can be modulated through the precision and position. The process may re remind only one of playing a theremin, but its parameters are strange and isn't enough to crush any hope of taming this new instrument and getting a simple melody out of it. Hope. Perceive. The surface of the parapelagion crawls and buzzes like a swarm into the corner of your eye. When you look at it outright, its smudge bothers you in a blurred shape, melting into the impression of a singular wall. You cannot say you have seen these insects move. You cannot see anything when you look at it. Yet the impression of life remains. What if it flew away? two impressions perceive this place smells of strawberries where are they hiding underneath this yellow cover the perfect blue summer sky reigns you were mistaken it smells of blood in the way rust smells of blood breathe again did you misremember from the heartbeat to the next what made you think of blood this is copper you know copper a solid line of trees stands guard in the horizon and looks through the way rubber is burning somewhere and there is no smoke only a co collagated mat coagulated black mass it makes you cough it is emblem of smoke and every niche filled with you an incessant chirping of crickets your lungs are filled with a melancholy that collects inside a bucket left inside of an abandoned orchid in the spring you cast no at last you can be certain the breeze is carrying a smell of thyme telephone bay leaves dandelion manganese of zinc morphology corners door of digressor absence lemon Perceive, or look up, see, parapilon, per a li e p p don. The word you've entered isn't in the dictionary. Click on the spelling suggested below or try again, using the search bar above. Parapilon. Variant of this definition, a variant. Noun. Definition of this is six-faced polyhedron of all those who faces a polygrams and lying in pairs of parallel planes. Alright, sure, but you can't help but think that this is missing a certain genisaki. Perceive at some point around knee height, 
there is a fissure. Tracing its rim with a finger creates a whistling sound that can be modulated through the compression and precision. The process may remind one of playing a theorem. A th theorem. We've been here. Finger. Perceive. Run your finger along the edge gently like you would brush your stomach. Perceive. Been here. Pressure. As you take one more step towards the looming structure, the ground gives underneath you. Keep going. Keep sinking. Deep under the wheat. Heavy, mature spikes crush your shoulders and crown your head. Go. The trail continues underground like a tunnel lined with soil, damp and dark. Look up. See nothing. The, the, the structure's mass waste above you in the cool earth. If this presence conveys a meaning, it is whispering to you in your muscles. To the tension that your shoulders and they keep their secrets. Perceive. Stand in front of the this structure again with your arms crossed were you called here by a voice a broadcast a vibration stand still listen for answers the faintest echo coming from the dark mass in front of you would never would be an answer but you hear your heart slow down and the creaking of your muscles as they unclench the a laurel landscape filled with the creeping of crickets oh that's not right it's not just that something is missing something changed before you remember it as a faint spark of perception and you now have get changed again it takes a while for your thoughts to come back from the furthest ends of the figure. Gather them all here, under the black mass, where reason flees and memories melt into strange shapes. The world is silent now. It wasn't before. Put a hand in the dark wall. Not that I can help you. Think. There was a noise. A noise familiar enough to fade in the background as your attention was consumed by the black furnace. Loud enough to be felt in its absence. It's coming from the fractured time. It's your ringtone. It was your ringtone which hung in the air that went silent again. Check your phone. Pass the wall of emails and notifications. You missed a call. Unknown number. Call back. Ignore the missed call. Call back. Call back. The figure looms overhead, engulfing you in all your attempts at sense-making. The phone is not ringing yet. Ongoing, outgoing call hanging in the air, searching, asking, urging, pushing through. At last, you hear the dial tone. It rings. Keeps ringing. Six seconds pass. No, ten seconds. No, a million fifty-three thousand and eighty-six seconds pass. No, the clock remains shattered. Your phone falls silent. Your hand feels empty. Leaning against the wall. Look at your reflection. Your reflection looks at you. Your reflection looks at you and blinks. Look at your reflection. Your reflection looks at you. Look at your reflection. You can't look away. When at last, at last, if only you had another mirror and the resulting infinity world crack, infinity would crack in this thing in an instant. You know that under the nails and between the toes of your feet, considering using your phone, the darkened screen, not the front camera that may have data loss. If only you had another mirror, okay. At last, since in this economy, at last, what are you waiting for? Oh, can I read this? Yes. You could have just kept going your way, but you but you know that. But big solids can be a little stubborn like that, a little persistent. It must be something about mass, but by their very nature, you outrun them easily. This doesn't matter. It really doesn't. What's, what is a strange building? whoop de doo There's at least four strange buildings in your neighborhood. Get a grip. Just keep going your way. Okay. Every niche filled with an incessant chirping of crickets. Wheat grows and grows. Consider the enigma of the fields at last. From within the depths of the, of the figure, you hear a muffled, distorted, terrible, and familiar the notes of your ringtone. Put your other hand against the wall. An identical outstretched hand meets it. Your reflection keeps staring at you in your eyes. The phone stops ringing. Then a cloud covers the sun. The surface goes back to black. This is a black figure in a yellow field. That creatures encrypted is the end of this episode.
I'd say for a small like running in browser game, that was pretty interesting. It felt very eldritch in the way that uh, it was presented. I'm going to try my best to combine this small snippet with the rest of it. Uh, but yeah, thanks again everyone for joining, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Stay safe, y'all.